Hey friends, my name is George Gianaris. I'm a chef of 36 years, and if you're here, it's probably because you like to eat healthy, save money, and cook like a pro. But even the healthiest of us, every once in a while we like to indulge in a nice ice cold beer. I found this thing called the Beer Maker. You may have seen it on Shark Tank. I gave it a shot, I bought it with my own money. So nothing in this video was given to me, nothing in this video was sponsored. Everything here is my own personal opinion. I wanna make beer for three different reasons. Number one, I wanna make it with whatever ingredients I wanna use. I want them to all be organic. Number two, I wanna experiment with digestive enzymes like amylase. Sometimes when you add that to beer, people like who are gluten intolerant like myself can tolerate the beer a little bit better. And number three, maybe I'm gonna make a beer that I'm not even gonna drink. I'm gonna reduce it and use it in food to enhance the flavor, sort of like what you would do with wine. So stick around, either way, Watch this video, and you'll see if the beer maker's worth it. When you receive your beer maker package, you're gonna get a ton of different parts, and it's a little daunting because you really don't know what these parts are, but as you make beer, it becomes very easy. So what I'd like to do today is just show you the parts as they are associated with each stage of the brewing process. And the first part of the process is we're gonna make the wort. And the wort is basically taking the malt, the barley, and adding water to it, heating it up, and we get a syrup out of it. That syrup is sweet. When we go to the second stage, which is to pitch the yeast and the hops, that syrup gets eaten by the yeast and it creates the beer, essentially, you know, in a very basic way. But the most crucial part, and the thing that I feel that the company neglected to address was this rubber gasket that automatically comes on the brew lid. This is the brew lid, which is attached to the brew basket. That's where all of our grains go. What almost caused me to just return it and never deal with it again was the lid, believe it or not. They do address this on their website, and it's very, very important that you address it right away. They should have addressed it right away. This lid here is not seated properly. It leaks out all over the place, it's a disaster. Also, when you do break this down and clean it, you're gonna throw these two items inside of your dishwasher. I recommend that you take this gasket off. The heat from the dishwasher will make this warp and you don't want a loose gasket. They tell you with clarity how to install this rubber gasket back onto the lid. They recommend using this device here. This is actually used to put uh, the gasket around uh, screen doors. You can use a credit card. You don't need to purchase this device. I happen to have it because I've done that before. I've changed out my screens. But basically, the top of the lid has the latches going only up in one direction. So we're gonna flip this upside down like this and the hinge is gonna be on the top. This gasket has a step in it. That step should be facing towards your counter. So the lip, the wide part, should be facing up towards you. Just get it into place by making it go around the top lip of that lid. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. Press it into place with your fingers as a starting point. Get it relatively seated. And you can see through the translucency of that lip if it's going into place. Start from the middle of the top, use the blunt edge of the roller or your credit card and just gently push it into place. You wanna to push too hard because you'll stretch it into place and then it won't fit right. And go all the way around. It's gonna be wavy, you can see that it's wavy and that's fine. Until you generally have it seated everywhere with there's no kinks and it's not stretched in one area or bunched up in another area. Once it's seated or in, just make sure it's not wavy. Go in, keep it consistent all the way around. It looks like it's about an eighth of an inch or so into that lip and I guess, as I said, you can see it right through the top. That looks good to me. I'm gonna flip it over, make sure nothing's sticking out. I want nothing sticking out, because if you close that lid and there's a portion of it sticking out, it gets caught, doesn't create a vacuum, and it leaks out through that part. The bottom part is flush all the way around. That's ready to go. In this kit, in every single kit, comes what's called the brew bag, and that's the beauty of this kit. Everything happens in here. So it's very easy to keep this sterile. Very important, because if you have to go through different stages and each stage of the beer making process is in, if you introduce bacteria that's foul, it'll ruin your beer. So everything happens here, and that's a great part. Oh, it comes another bag. This bag is called the waste bag. 
And there's four valves that come with this part. These have black gaskets on them. The other two have red gaskets. They go on the keg. So just get the ones with the black baskets. They're actually in a separate box with the keg, so you don't need to worry about it. These are your white valves. And these white valves here get screwed to the brew bag. But before you screw one of them in, you can put one in, and when you do put it in, just make sure that it, it's nice and snug. I like to hold the white part that's fused to the bag tightly and give this a really nice turn. One of the second problems I had with the system is I didn't do that tight enough and it just slowly leaked out of there. Before you add your second valve to the brew bag, you take what's called servomyces and you throw it into that bag. Now, all of this is done on the app. It walks you through it step by step. The app has the video and then it has GIFs underneath that follow each phase of that particular process. And on top of it, they give you this brew card which tells you what to do at each stage. It's really well written and very easy to understand. The Servomyces goes into our bag. You just want it to fall in like that. There it is, it's in our bag. Now we can add our second valve to that. And again, hold that plastic hard lip that's fused to the bag and give it a nice, good, tight turn. Not to the point where you're ripping that plastic off, but you just don't want it to leak there. Great. Now, onto our brew bag, our, our waste bag, we're gonna take this gray valve and we're gonna add it to our waste bag like this. This other valve here goes onto the bottom of our brew basket. And this is the front of the brew basket. So you want to turn this until that black button is facing the front. And that should be fairly snug, and it is. This is the strainer basket. The strainer basket goes inside of the brew basket like this. Now we could take our lid and pop it on to the brew basket. Just snaps into place. And you'll see as it closes, you can see that it creates a seal. And this part is sticking out. So you gotta be a little careful, make sure that nothing's sticking out. When I do that, it seals tightly all the way around. We have to put this on our beer maker. We open the door on the beer maker. We take the lid off the beer maker. And in the back of this beer maker here is a valve. You have to kind of pay attention to a little bit because that white valve goes into the back of this black gasket here. So when you're situating this, you gotta make sure that that valve is in there. We're gonna attach our brew bag to this. Underneath this is a hook that holds the handle. So you just simply put that on there like that, very easy. And then you put the white valve into the gray valve. Should pop right into place, and it's in place, it's in there snug. And that's that. And then we take our waste bag and we put the waste bag into the bottom valve. Just like that. And you heard that snap. And that just goes in there like so. Push the bag up against the back of the unit. This here is the press bar. There's two places where the press bar can go. For the first stage, we put it on the back hole. Right in there and just sits right in place just like that. The app will actually walk you through every phase of this. So we start our maker kit, we choose the beer, which is the Go Sweet, and, and there's just a beautiful, beautiful instructions. This is the, totally the best part of this process is, the, is how great the app is. So this is a graduated container, 3,000 milliliters of water right there, and we just pour that into the top of our strainer basket with nothing in it, just the water. And as that pours down into the bag, we monitor it to make sure that there are no leaks, especially around the lips. Like we wanna make sure there's nothing leaking there, make sure that our valves are seated properly. So far, it's looking pretty good. We're gonna add our malt and our barley to this. We're gonna take our grain bag and put it on top. Now we can touch this in this stage, not an issue because it's not, we don't have to worry about contamination because it's gonna literally boil it. But there will come a time where we can no longer have contact with what's happening in there because we could contaminate. Right now, not a big deal. And you can just flatten this out like that, get it good and flat. 
Then it tells us to continue by adding 3,700 milliliters of water, so I'm just gonna measure that out. All right, we're gonna just pour this over the top of our wheat, barley, and our malt. Really, really straightforward. This is where it's crucial, guys. You gotta make sure that that rubber gasket doesn't pinch anywhere. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure it's seated properly. Close that lid like that. One, two, three. Put the top lid back on. It just hinges on pretty straight, pretty easily like that. Put it in place, close the door. This light is blinking white. That means it's waiting for us to tell the beer maker to begin the brew process. And at the bottom, you hit done. You press the button and now it goes to a slow blink like that. And it'll keep you posted as to when the next phase is. Really well designed. Got a notification on my phone that it's time to pitch the yeast. A couple tips that you need to know. This is the part where it's extremely crucial that you do not contaminate anything in here. So you, number one, make sure your hands are washed. What I do is go one step further and I'm gonna throw gloves on. Here's a couple pointers that weren't mentioned in the video that I think are kind of crucial. They tell you to wipe down the foil on the bag on anything that you open, including your scissors, but be careful when you're making certain batches because there are a couple beers here where you have to add a secondary hop. This one you don't, which is fine, but I, what I almost did once is I accidentally wiped off the print on the bag and I didn't know which one was which. So make sure that before you start your process, you pull out your card. The card will tell you what hops and what yeast you're supposed to add to the pitching the, uh, to the pitching of the hops and, and the yeast. And, so, and then whatever is gonna be secondary, make sure you just put that away somewhere else. That's number one. The wonderful thing about this is everything is so self-contained. This is the only stage where you can really ruin things, so just be very, very careful here. So we'll open our front door. We're going to take our lid off, and we're going to remove this bar here carefully. And then as we open this gently, you'll hear a sound. The vacuum will pull the, the liquid into the bag. So just open that really gently. And our waste basket is here. We're gonna tip it like that because we want to kind of maximize the amount of liquid that gets drained from our grains here because that is beer. Stay. Okay. See these two metal pads? The water line has to kind of be slightly above that. If it isn't, you're gonna boil water and add it to this. Now, they suggested that once you add the boiling water to this, that you push the beer up into the brew basket so that the hot water will mix into the wort that's already there. You gotta use a thermometer and make sure that, that the temperature of whatever you're gonna add your yeast to here is, it, is it below 103 degrees because you'll kill your yeast. So even though you mix it up, I mixed it up a few times and I, found, and I, I thank God I checked because it was like 115, 120, 130. So don't add your yeast to the brew basket until it is below 103 degrees. Safely, 95, 96 degrees is ideal. Then what we do is we take our alcohol pad here, the sanitizer, and uh, we wipe down our scissors with this. The water level here is fine. I don't need to add anything to it, but while that thing is uh, draining, where we're gonna cut our bags, we're going to wipe it with alcohol. So we're gonna sprinkle our yeast into, this, into our beer here. It's gonna eat the sugar from the water that's how we're gonna get our beer and there's gonna be a fermentation process happening here over the next few days then we just add whatever hops they tell us to add to this these three packages pretty straightforward I mean that's really it you want to seal your lid and as before just be very careful you make sure you do not kink that rubber gasket and they encourage you to keep an eye on this. The beer fermentation process is gonna start, it's gonna start bubbling, it's gonna start foaming. Another thing that's gonna happen is this thing is going to vibrate. You have to set it on your app to tell it when you don't want it to vibrate because it is really loud and it makes a lot of noise. So mine I turn off from 9, uh, 11 p.m. till 9 a.m., it won't vibrate. They encourage you to, to push the bag around a little bit, make sure there aren't any yeast particles or fragments that are settling in the corners here. You want it all kind it go down to the waste basket. Pretty straightforward at this point. We're gonna add our lid to this, close our door, press the button, it's blinking white. Oh, that's it, it's got a slow blink. And then it's gonna notify me when it's time to move on to the next step.
So eight days have passed. My brew now is ready to be transferred to the keg. Got a notification on my phone. This is not the last step though, because the most important step here, and it really shouldn't be ignored, is cleaning everything. If you don't clean everything properly, all the lines will get gunked up, and the whole thing will become a catastrophe the next time you try to make beer. Not that they don't give you good instructions on how to clean everything, but I think I have a better way of doing it, so stick around for that. There's our beautiful beer. It's gorgeous. My phone app told me it's at 43 degrees, so it actually is a refrigerator and a heater built into one. It does everything. It's a pretty cool little unit. This is our disposable bag, and that needs to get tossed. That's where you make your biggest mess. You may want to put a tray underneath this, because you want to catch that when you release it, because once you let go of this, it does have a tendency of spilling out. So you push this black button, it gets released and see how that all comes out of there you didn't have that tray you'd have a gigantic mess now we have extra water in our brew tub here it looks like this is the first time i'm doing it with actually excess water in there also be super super careful not to throw out the valves it's very easy to throw out the valves because they're attached to the brew bags so i'm going to take mine off right now and it's really gunked up i'll show you how to clean this in a bit i'm going to hold the bag Press the black button and just take this, put this in our sink. We're just going to unhook this here. There's our beer. Ready to go. There's a top valve. This is the top valve and this is the bottom valve. And over here on the, on this brew keg, it's called, it says top valve and bottom valve. So you'll notice here that there's a gray part of the bottom half of the keg and there's a black part. That's the top half of the keg. With the handle facing the hinge, drop the bag into the slot where it fits and then put the valves into the corresponding spots like that. They just fit in really nicely. Make sure that none of the hoses are pinched. These are the valves with the red gasket on them. They get screwed on like this. Nice and tight, really snug, but you want to make sure that when you, you take a look around, you want to make sure that that red valve isn't poking out or has kinked in any way. You can see it all the way around that it hasn't. Do the same to the bottom, just like that. Almost makes sense to go backwards, so you hear a click, because you want to cross thread that. There it goes, and then just turn it, and just give it a nice snug fit. Now this gets clipped onto here, like so. Make sure that that hose is not kinked. Now this, make sure your also your keg valve is closed because otherwise it'll leak out all over the place. Do the same now with the top valve. Just push it on there. Tuck the hose inside the casing in such a way so that it doesn't get sandwiched in when we close the slid, which is going to be right now, just like that. Make sure that the bag goes into the top part, should seat pretty easily. Look around, see we have a kinked hose there, bad move, just make sure that goes back in like that. And just close it shut. And now we're going to pressurize this. Now we're going to put the CO2 cartridge to it. Once you close this lid and you apply this pressure into this unit, you never, ever open it up. As a matter of fact, they put the CO2 cartridge right at the hinge so you can't open it up. Don't ever fool yourself and think, oh, I'll just unscrew the CO2 cartridge and open it. The bag will blow up and there will be beer everywhere. So once this is closed, this is on, you never open it again. You have to depressurize it before you open this again. It'll make a funny sound, like a whistle. Just screw it in, threads in nicely. You'll hear it, put my microphone near it. You wanna run out a little bit of beer from the line and you just hold off now. Don't even drink it. You can taste it if you want, but they recommend that you keep it in the fridge for three days for it to settle. And then in three days from now, we'll have delicious beer. In the meantime, we can clean up the valves that we have that are, have been removed from that system. And then once we empty the beer from the keg, will clean out the other valve. When you purchase your beer, they also have an accessory. It's a beer sanitizer that you use to clean this machine. I recommend you buy it. It really does a good job. They also sell it on Amazon. I could put a link to that down below. I buy them by the case because I have a gelato machine in my restaurant, so I use this stuff a lot. 
The instructions for this sanitizer here say that you should put one of these to two and a half gallons of water. So basically I'm gonna roughly put a quarter of a pack in this warm water here. One thing that you should never do is sanitize the machine with bleach. You'll ruin pretty much everything. So do not use bleach to sanitize this. Throw in the two valves that were on the kit. And I'm gonna throw in my rubber gasket here and make sure that that's sanitized as well. You can leave it there for a little while, not too long. You can leave it there for an hour or so. Take it out, don't rinse it. Just take it out and let everything dry naturally at room temperature. And once it's thoroughly dried, then you rinse it off and everything here will be sanitized. We also have to clean our machine and it wouldn't be a bad idea to use some of this sanitizer in a bucket of water and clean the machine out. You could take the brew tub, the brew basket, and put that all in your dishwasher. And in a couple days, we're gonna come back here and taste that beer. And I can tell you right now, it's what I've had a few times that I've made it. Every single one is delicious. This is our keg. It's been sitting in the refrigerator for three days. It's ready to be consumed at this point. I really like this ghost wheat. I like the color. It looks and smells very much like a beautiful summer beer that would be very citrusy. I could tell by the scent of the hops that it was gonna be slightly citrusy. I'm gonna give it a taste for the first time. It's absolutely delicious. It's got a little tiny hint of citrus in it. Very fine bubbles. This may be one of my favorites, extremely drinkable. I am so glad that I invested in this kit because I am by no stretch of the imagination a decent beer maker, but I feel with very little effort and much confidence that I can use this product and eventually come up with my own batches, which is the goal of this, is to create beer that I will eventually impart into my food, not necessarily for its drinkability, but for what it will do to the final product. And I'm also excited to experiment with uh, different additives like amylase, which breaks down the, the, the gluten in the wheat, because I am sensitive to that. Uh, so far the beers have been really good to me um, and I'm hoping that the company will come out with uh, eventually organic uh, malt or organic barley. Uh, but, but once you're done with this and it's emptied, there is a little bit of a cleaning process. In essence, you disconnect all the valves just like we did earlier with the beer maker itself and they recommend that you throw them in the dishwasher. I don't necessarily recommend that. I think they should be washed under warm water. I feel that the dishwasher is gonna be too harsh. It's gonna eventually compromise the integrity of the valves. But wash them with good soapy water, sanitize them the same way that I showed you earlier. And then in the instructional video, they tell you to run water through the beer line to get all the beer out of the line. As a final method, what I recommend that you do is pour a little bit of peroxide, 3% peroxide, into that valve and just leave it in there. It'll act as a sanitizer, it won't be harsh, it's all plastic, it's not gonna affect the integrity of the, the tubing. I wanna thank you for tuning in, I wanna thank Beer Maker. They, again, this is not sponsored in any way. Um, I think they're just a really good company with good intentions, they get back to you if they have issues. If you have issues with, with the product, they're very good about getting back to you. Maybe not right away, but it seems like they're a bit overwhelmed right now with the premiere on Shark Tank. Um, if you've used this product, if you've come up with your own beer, please leave a comment down below. What's your favorite uh, ratios? What's your favorite hops to use? And, uh, and uh, let me know how you make out with this product. And I want to thank you for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, like this video if you liked it, and we'll see you again soon.